When I burned up the wires on my first metal melter, I decided to turn the transformer core into a stick welder. But one transformer wasn't enough to actually make it weld anything. In this project, we'll be modifying two microwave transformers because more transformers means more power. For this project, I scavenged parts from a couple more microwaves. I found these for free on my local classifieds. Not only are we using twice as many transformers here, but twice as much power. Seriously dangerous amounts of power. These transformers are roughly the same size and look nearly identical, except for the placement of the bases. Using an angle grinder, we can cut down the seam of one of the shallow welds holding this base plate to the transformer. The other seam is a little trickier to get to, but once it's cut, you can see that the base plate can now be removed fairly easily. Now these next few steps are going to look a lot like the modification we did in the metal melter project. After grinding the welds and opening the seam with a chisel, the eye section of the transformer can be pulled back to reveal the precious primary and secondary coils. I found that the primary coil can be removed by gently prying up with a chisel. It's important to work it out of the transformer gently because the goal is to keep this in perfect condition. You might remember there are two magnetic shunts that get knocked out next, and the low voltage winding gets removed because that won't serve any purpose here. Now to extract the secondary coil, my method of choice is to rest it loosely on the jaws of a bench vise, then use a rubber hammer to knock down on the transformer until the coil is free. This one finished up without any damage at all. If you don't have a bench vise, you can improvise with a couple of blocks of wood. In either case, your secondary coils can be salvaged in near perfect condition. After a quick cleanup of the paper and resin, our primary coil can be replaced on the transformer with the terminals facing down. We're going to be rewinding a new secondary, so it's important that we have the flat side facing up. When it comes to winding coils, life will be a lot simpler if we build a little jig. I cut this piece of scrap wood so that it's as wide as the centerpiece and just a little shorter than the top. The length is cut so that it overhangs the edges by about half an inch on either side. We can complete the form by adding a top and bottom panel, then forming a piece of paper to fit the sides. At this point, I think we're about ready to add some cable. I found this 50 foot length of wire on clearance at the hardware store. This is 8 gauge, stranded copper wire, and cost me about $17. I'm going to use my vise to hold the form in place and begin winding the cable around the center of the form as tightly as possible. We need to build this coil six turns high, which isn't too difficult the first layer, but gets progressively more challenging on the second layer and might seem like it's near impossible on the third. When it's packed together six turns high and three layers deep, the paper flaps can be folded over and taped together. Now this is the tricky part. We need to unscrew the top and bottom panels to access our coil and separate it out of the form while keeping it all in one piece. I used some electrical tape to ensure the coil wouldn't unravel. Okay, it's time to transplant our new secondary into the transformer. I have the best success by using a clamp to pinch the sides in while I push the coil down into place. Let's just double check the coil sits flush at the top and mix up some two-part epoxy glue to finish up. Just like the transformer in our metal melter project, the entire top area gets a liberal coating of epoxy just before sealing it back together. In order for this to form a strong bond, the connection will need a lot of pressure holding it together while it sets. This is where a set of clamps or a bench vise can be invaluable. While our first transformer is setting, we can prepare the second one in the exact same way. Our second coil is 18 turns of 8 gauge wire exactly like the first, and transplanted just like before. Don't worry too much about which way the coil goes in, it doesn't really matter yet. Finally, we can glue and clamp that together and leave it to set for around 24 hours. The final result should look something like this. The connection is strong and the coils are extremely snug, so any vibrations will be kept to a minimum. Well, there you have it, the basic makings of an AC stick welding system. And these two electrodes will eventually become our clamp and stinger. From this point, it really doesn't take much more to finish the system up and turn it into a useful little hobby welder. Look for how to do that in part two. Well, that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. 
Check them out at thekingofrandom.com.